This is a non-religious look at the ancient Book of the Apocalypse, otherwise known as Revelation chapter 4. In the previous video, we looked at the first three chapters of Revelation and found out the seven stars refer to both the Pleiades star system and the angels of the early Christian churches. We are told these seven stars or angels will be judged by the one like the Son of Man, and there's an implication that these angels, which are stars, may refer, at least in part, to the angels that are wandering stars in the short book of Jude that precedes Revelation. We were also told that the seven candlesticks do not refer to the early churches in Asia, but refer to seven churches or assemblies of people that are the eyes of Yahweh, which go forth over the whole earth. We're told the one like the Son of Man is the Ancient of Days in Daniel 7, and will stand in the midst of those candlesticks or assemblies of people throughout the whole earth, and the Spirit talks to them. The Spirit says to those churches or seven assemblies of people, those who overcome will eat of the tree of life, will not be harmed by the second death, will receive a stone with a new name, will rule with a rod of iron and be given the morning star, will be clothed with white raiment. Their names are in the book of life, which we're told in the book of Daniel are those who will be delivered from the final time of trouble. And the name of the city of God, New Jerusalem, will be written on them, and that city will come down out of heaven prepared as a bride. In this video, we'll look at chapter 4, which expounds upon this and goes into more detail about the throne itself. At the end of chapter 3 in verses 20 through 22, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. Other translations of that word sup are eat with, share a meal, or dine with. So it says, If anyone hears the one like the Son of Man's voice and opens the door, he will dine with them, and to him that overcometh, he will grant to sit with him in his throne. So we'll add that here, those who open the door will dine with the one like the Son of Man, and the overcomers will sit on the throne with the one like the Son of Man. Then chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 say, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. So notice he said earlier, anyone who opens the door will dine with him, and now it says the door will be opened in heaven. So that's a clue that those who dine with him will do so in heaven. They will open the door in heaven, and they will dine with him in heaven. Then it says, And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. This tells us the throne is in heaven, and just prior in chapter 3, it said those who overcome will sit with him on his throne. So there is a throne in heaven, and those who overcome will sit there with the one like the Son of Man. Chapter 2 implied that the overcomers are part of the seven churches or assemblies of people in verses 7, 11, and 17 because the mention of the reward for the overcomers is addressed to the churches or assemblies of people. The Spirit says to the churches, those who overcome will eat of the tree of life. What we know for sure is the names of the overcomers will be written in the book of life, and Daniel 12 tells us those in the book will be delivered at the time of trouble. We know from our previous examinations that we're told those in the book will be delivered at the time a giant meteorite hits the earth, which will occur at the end of a 1260-year period and at the start of a final three-and-a-half-year period. This tells us that those in the book refer to the woman in Revelation 12 who represents those who fly to safety in the second escape of that chapter. We also found that the woman in Revelation 12 represents those in Judea in the first fleeing, but the multitude of all nations in the second escape by flight. It says the woman will fly into her place where she is nourished for a time, times, and half a time. And we are also told the great multitude which no man can number who will come out of the great tribulation 
will be fed by the Lamb which we know is at the throne, and that multitude which is not measured will walk the holy city for three and a half years. That holy city is in heaven, and it's called New Jerusalem, and it is also represented as a bride. Now we're told it is the overcomers who have the name New Jerusalem written on them, so they are the bride. And it's implied that the overcomers are coming out of the seven churches or assemblies of people, which, as we previously discussed, may refer to the current world population of seven billion people. The woman in Revelation 12, as we discussed in a previous video, represents three things. First, she represents the constellation Virgo, second, those in Judea, and third, all those written in the book, who are also referred to as the multitude in Revelation 11 and the elect in Matthew 24. Now we have confirmation in Revelation 1-4 through 4 that the woman in the end times represents the overcomers because we're told the name New Jerusalem will be written on the overcomers. New Jerusalem is also referred to as the bride and it is also known as the holy city which is in heaven. We're told the multitude will walk that holy city for 42 months which is equal to three and a half years. The throne is in heaven, and the overcomers, we're told, will sit there. They are the ones whose names are in the book of life, and that trail of codes leads us to the multitude of all tribes and nations who will be taken to the throne when the meteorite hits. Now chapter 4 is giving us more details about the throne where the overcomers will sit. Verse 3 says, He that sat on the throne was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. A jasper stone is a kind of gemstone and is usually either brown, yellow, or red, but it can also be green, orange, or black, and it can also be a clear or white color. Sardine, the other stone mentioned in verse 3, is a gem of a blood red color. So Revelation 4 verse 3 is telling us that the one sitting on the throne in heaven looked like a gem stone that is like a jasper and or a sardine stone. So we'll put that here. The one sitting on the throne looks like a jasper or sardine gem. And we'll also add that here. The one sitting on the throne looks like a jasper or a sardine gem. But Revelation 21 says the light of the bride, the great city, holy Jerusalem in heaven, is like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. So this tells us two things. It tells us the light of the bride is like the gem that sits on the throne, which looks like a jasper, and the color of it is crystal clear. So we'll add that here. The gem on the throne appears to be the light of the bride, which is crystal clear. And we'll add that here as well. It looks like a gem, but its color is clear as crystal, and it emits light. Then verse 3 adds that there was a rainbow around the throne in sight like an emerald. So a rainbow is around the throne, but he said it looks like an emerald. Emeralds are green and rainbows are multicolored. So this may mean that his choice of the word rainbow to describe what he saw was not in reference to the color of the rainbow, but instead the shape, transparency, and composition of it. We know rainbows are transparent arcs of refracted light, so he may have seen a transparent arc of emerald green light around the throne. So an emerald green rainbow or transparent arc of light was around the throne, and then verse 4 says, And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, in other words, twenty-four seats. And upon the seats I saw twenty-four elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. So twenty-four seats are around the throne, 
and on the seats there are twenty-four elders clothed in white with golden crowns. And we'll add that here as well. And notice the 24 elders are clothed in white, and the overcomers are also clothed in white. The word translated as elders, number 4245, means the elder of age, a senior, or forefathers. And it's been used in the Bible to describe both an old man and an old woman. So it's saying 24 seniors or forefathers are sitting around the throne clothed in white raiment and gold crowns. Then verse 5 says, And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. So seven lamps of fire burning are before the throne. And we'll add that here as well. Seven lamps of fire are before the throne, and they represent the seven spirits. And we'll also add that to this page as well so we can see the connection between the seven candlesticks and the seven lamps of fire. We know the Spirit speaks to the seven churches or assemblies of people, and this seems to say there are specifically seven spirits. So this makes it clear that there are an equal number of spirits to the assemblies of people. So if the seven assemblies of people represent the seven billion people currently living on the planet, then this may indicate that there is a spirit at the throne in heaven for every single person on the planet. What we know for sure is that this is telling us there are seven spirits and the Spirit speaks to the seven assemblies of people. And Revelation tells us to hear what the Spirit is saying to those seven assemblies of people. Then verse 6 says, And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne there were four beasts full of eyes, the first beast was like a lion, the second beast like a calf, the third beast had the face of a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings. So four beasts full of eyes with six wings each in the midst of and around the throne. The first is a lion, the second is a calf, the third has a face like a man, and the fourth is a flying eagle. So we'll put those here as well. We know the book of Daniel also talks about four beasts, but in Daniel, the first beast is a lion, the second is a bear, the third is a leopard, and the fourth is the great and terrible beast with ten horns. We know that the four beasts in Daniel represent the earthly governments that are given power by the dragon, the angels that fall to earth, and we're told that those humans who worship the dragon and the beast will not go to the heavenly place during the final time of trouble. So the relationship between the four beasts around the throne in heaven and the four beasts ruling on the earth may, on one level, represent the relationship between the wheat and the tares. The book of Daniel and Revelation explain that the four beasts represent consecutive empires starting with Babylon and ending with a world government that destroys by peace, which is a covert continuation of the Roman Empire. The first beast that ruled on the earth was a lion, and the first beast listed at the throne is also a lion. This may mean the two groups, the wheat and the tares, started out the same. But then the lion on the earth became the bear, and the second beast at the throne in heaven is a calf. This may represent that in the second phase, the tares became like bears, and the wheat became like calves. The interesting thing about the relationship between a bear and a calf is that bears are not as much hunters as they are scavengers. Most actually eat more plants than animals, although they will eat meat when they can find it. They rarely have to hunt and can simply steal meat from other animals. According to the American Bear Association, approximately 75 to 85% of a black bear's diet is plants. 
and bears in general do hunt for insects and fish, but usually eat animals only when the opportunity comes their way. Usually only visibly sick, injured, or dead animals will attract the attention of a bear. So while the second beast ruling on the earth was like a bear, the wheat, this may say, were like calves. They may have been devoured if they were sick, injured, or already dead by some other predator, but they were not the main prey for the bear. In the third phase, however, the bear turned into a leopard. Leopards do regularly hunt calves. In Africa, antelopes provide a majority of their prey. But notice the third beast at the throne has a face of a human. The relationship between leopards and humans are similar to the relationship between bears and calves. Leopards, in general, do not regularly hunt humans, but they would probably eat one if given the chance. The fourth beast in Daniel is the great and terrible beast with ten horns, and the fourth beast at the throne is the flying eagle. The relationship between the terrible beast and the flying eagle is clear, the eagle flies away from the beast. This is what we're told will occur at the burning stone that falls from heaven, the giant meteorite. Those in the book, the multitude of all nations, the woman, will be given two wings of a great eagle that they might fly into the wilderness into their place where they will be nourished for a time times and half a time from the face of the serpent. So the eagle at the throne may also represent on one level the woman who is the multitude of all nations, those in the book who will fly to where the throne is in heaven for three and a half years or 42 months. That may be one level of meaning for the four beasts at the throne in heaven. They may represent the transformation of the wheat parallel to the transformation of the tares over the past 2,500 years ending at the rescue and the meteorite. Also, before we move on, I want to point out something else. In a previous video, we looked at Revelation 11, which seems to indicate that the time, times, and half a time refer to a three and a half day period as opposed to a three and a half year period. There are three significant lengths of time in the end times prophecy that seem at first glance to refer to the same length of time, although upon closer inspection it becomes clear they are three separate lengths of time. That is, the 1260 days, the 42 months, and the time times in half a time. The only chapters that overtly talk about these time periods are Daniel 7, Daniel 12, Revelation 11, 12, and 13. Daniel 7, Daniel 12, and Revelation 12 give us insight into the time, times, and half a time. Revelation 12 also adds details about the 1260 days and how they relate to the time, times, and half a time. Revelation 11 and 13 detail the 42 months, and Revelation 11 seems to explain how all three time periods relate to each other. This is how these time periods seem to relate according to the Bible. The 1260 days appear to represent the 1260 years that the witnesses act as prophets in sackcloth, when those in Judea are fleeing into the wilderness and there is no rain of fire and brimstone during that time. It happens at the end. And this is what Jesus called the tribulation of the days. The time times in half a time is the most mysterious length of time, but seems to refer to a three and a half day period that occurs when the meteorite hits the earth. This is when the multitude of all nations are flying to the safe place. This is also the time period that the dragon is making war with the remnant, when the beast is killing the witnesses, and when the saints are in the hand of the little horn. It's also known as the time of trouble in Daniel 12, which it says is the accomplishment of the scattering of the holy people. The 42 months is the most clear time period among the three. There's no biblical rule that I'm aware of that states that months mean anything other than months. So this time period represents 42 actual months, which is equal to three and a half years. 
we're told this is when the multitude is walking the holy city in heaven, the time period the beast is allowed to continue, and the time the beast will blaspheme those who are in heaven. This appears to mean that within three and a half days after the asteroid or comet hits, the witnesses' bodies will be dead in the street, unburied, but within three and a half days, both they and the multitude will be in the heavenly place for three and a half years before they return to earth as the bride. That would mean they will only be in the hand of the little horn for three and a half literal days while the multitude is flying to safety. If new information comes to light that negates this, then we will consider it. But as of now, this appears to make the most sense given what we're told. So back to Revelation 4. The four beasts in the midst of and around the throne in heaven are parallel, yet different from the four beasts in the book of Daniel. They both start out as a lion, but then split into a bear and calf, then a leopard and man, then a terrible beast and an eagle. Since the four beasts of Daniel represent transitions occurring over a 2,500-year period, and both the four beasts of Daniel and the four beasts of Revelation start with a lion, this may mean that they represent the disposition and relationship between the wheat and tares over that 2,500-year period, both starting out as a lion, but the tares resulting in a terrible beast and the wheat resulting in the eagle flying to safety. So that is Revelation 4, and we'll continue with Revelation 5 next week. So for more information, the whole series playlist, Bible's Countdown to the Asteroid is linked here, and the ebook and website is linked in the description below. Just click on Show More to open up more links on this subject. If you like this video, please consider providing support. These presentations are funded by viewers like you. And thank you so much to everyone who is providing encouragement and making this work possible. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you next week.